So not long ago, this very intelligent guy started talking to me and commenting, making points that led to the creation of this video. He said, at 1300 MHz, the GT730 384 shader will be bordering the floating point performance of a GTX 750. Just so happens, according to HardwareBot, the average overclock is around 1300 MHz on air, and some have clocked as high as 2200 MHz on liquid nitrogen. 1300 MHz would be an achievement, and anything higher would be that much better. Would the PCI Express slot power supply of 75 watts be the limiting factor, or simply the chip itself? Hmm. I've decided to clock the GT730 as high as I can, and compare it to a new GTX 750 I bought to see just how similar the cards get. And in case you haven't seen my review of the GT730, you can find that here. MSI Afterburner wouldn't let me mess with the voltage for this card, so I found another program called Thundermaster, which is Palette's version, though I've never heard of them. And after vigorous testing and overclocking, these are the results I got. An additional 280 MHz on the core of the GT730, 203 MHz boost on the memory, and with only 0.175 volts being pumped into this little thing. So basically, the floating point performance measures how many polygons and triangles it can calculate and move around per second. I couldn't do the math myself, but I do have some links in the description for some forums that do talk about stuff relating to flops, but our friend here did the math for us. The GTX 750 has 1044 gigaflops at stock speed, and at its 1085 MHz boost, it's at 1111 gigaflops. On the GT730, on the other hand, when overclocked to 1286 MHz, it was at 987.6 gigaflops. And here are the results. As you can see from the test, the overclocked 730 did get higher FPS than the non-overclocked 730, but the GTX 750 outpaces by a great margin in every test. You can see the GTX 750 is far superior even though they have a very, very close floating point performance. I asked how low we'd have to clock the 750 to reach the same floating point performance of a, of a 730, and I'd have to clock it as low as 964.5 megahertz. I wasn't able to test this, but I'm quite positive the 750 would still come out on top from a tire shader count, double, doubled memory bandwidth, and bitrate. Today we learned that flops won't always guarantee the highest performance. But thank you guys for watching, I had a lot of fun making this video, and uh, a big thanks to our new friend who did the science for it. Like this video if you think I deserved it, and subscribe if you would like to see my video next week where we take a look at my GPU vault.